vermins are happening to Muslims. And Muslims are being butchered and all that. I mean, have you have you considered doing anything towards that issue as well internationally? It's very difficult for us to actually, at a local level, to do anything substantial that people will hear. But that doesn't mean to say that we have um, that you know we can divulge our responsibilities, abd abdicate our responsibilities. Um, clearly, this is a this is a genocide before our eyes, and it's being done by so-called peace-loving monks. Mm. You know, we have this great bastion Dalai Lama who preaches love, compassion for everybody, but unfortunately, it seems that this does not transcend to the Burmese Muslims. I have made representation to our local MP because, you know, we have to differentiate, you know, at the, what, our voice is within local government. Obviously right? your voice can go to MP. Absolutely. Well, yeah. So we, we, I've already made representations to our MP, Dennis McShane and John Healy and Kevin Barron. And we've actually written to Ed Milliman, the leader of our party as well, to make representation that this is, this is, this is clearly genocide happening in front of our eyes and it needs to stop. I mean, you know, Burma, has been uh, under the dictatorship for a number of years, but they're supposed to have turned the corner in, you know, towards looking through democracy. Unfortunately, they seem to have, um, uh, have took the view that they're going to let these individual areas. And so, and so and some of the things that we've actually seen on video footage is absolutely horrendous. And I think the onus is on all of us as Muslims and as good people as well. You know, when you mentioned I do, a, you know, you said that I do a lot of work for the BB. No, I, I, I work for the whole of community. the people of Rotherham, right. the whole community. So if these people were Sikhs or Hindus that were being persecuted, I would speak out for them as well, because this is not an issue of, of individual religions. This is an issue of civil rights, of humanity. Exactly, you know, and, exactly, yeah. and I, it is very sad, it is very sad that um, our government, our foreign, who's, you know, even those of another party, I have a huge amount of respect for William Hague. You know, and it's not, nothing to do with the fact that he went to a school in Rotherham and he was born in Rotherham <laughs> as well. Uh, but seriously, I'm very disappointed that nationally we have not made representations to Burma because we've started having more diplomatic relations with them and I would have thought and I would hope that David Cameron takes the opportunity to highlight to the Burmese government that this is unacceptable in the 21st century when this kind of horror and genocide exactly. is taking in place yeah. in front of our very eyes. Uh, you're very close to uh, Lord of the Amman. Uh, do you have any information, because he's sitting in the common, uh, do you have any information that he has taken anything forward regarding? All right, I thought you would ask me if I had any 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 uh, <laughs> any other information about Lord Ahmed. I probably have, but I won't tell you. Um, <laughs> yes, I am very uh, fortunate uh, to be very close to Lord Ahmed, as he's close to many many people, because he's a very very great example of what a good he's a, really a good he's Muslim a leader. Uh, he's a very good Muslim. Mashallah, he's a good British citizen. And a, man, and a man who actually speaks his mind. I know that last week, him and Parveen Qureshi, MP, and a couple of others, went to the Burmese um, embassy to, uh, to, re, uh, to apply for visas. They were refused. Mm -hmm. They wanted to go over and go on a, on a fact-finding mission to actually see for themselves what what's been that? happening there and make representations to the, to the administration there. But they were blankly refused. So Lord Ahmed has highlighted this. He's spoken out on uh, on a number of news outlets. Obviously, the mainstream media. This is the this is the sort of um, sad thing. The ma mainstream media has not picked this up. No, They've no, not reported no. it because, and I think that's where the onus is on us and people like Fias, uh, Shah Saab to actually use his good uh, good offices in the newspaper to highlight it, right? To make sure that we put it on the agenda because this is all about getting into the political international media's attention and then you will find that politicians will say because politicians will only react when their constituents start asking them questions so my um, um, uh, advice to people would be to please start writing to your members of parliament of course councillors can make representation as i said i have written to the leader of our party and i can also um, write to to, uh, to uh, william Hague. But I think it's a, the onus is on every single person. Because we can all write now, mashallah. Okay. You know, our youngsters, right? They speak better, better English than we can. Right. I'm coming to the last question, Councillor uh, Jagir. Uh, I know there are a lot of cuts being made by the government. And you just explained to us uh, in millions and whatever. Rotherham has been in limelight in the media 
in last couple of years regarding some grooming of young girls by uh, Pakistani uh, males and uh, obviously it was highlighted in all the medias, it was in the papers. We will not mention any names regarding this incident but what I would like to ask you as being a leader in the community for so long, what initiative have you taken to take these young boys off the street so they are not in the gangs, they're doing something concrete. Yes, you're, you are absolutely right. This was a case. Can I just correct you on, uh, on a factual please, point? Please. Um, this recent case that you're referring to about Pakistani boys, they were not Pakistani boys. Right. They were British boys. Right. They were all born here right. um, and they were British. But the issue... The background was Pakistani, that's why it was, their more, moment, there was more highlighted in, in the media. Well, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make, is that right. the media may, may try to highlight this as a Pakistani or a South Asian issue. No. The Pakistanis in these communities were the ones who actually came, like my parents, in the 1950s and 60s. They were the Pakistanis. These people we're talking about now, over overwhelming majority of the people, we're talking about British boys they are British citizens. They were born here. Well, most of them have never been to Pakistan as well. Absolutely. Right. Now, now, that doesn't mean... They were born and brought up in this country and never been to Pakistan, most of them. Absolutely. Now, the issue is, it is a clear issue because, as you said, um, a couple of, I think it was last year, these, uh, these people were Second tried case. tried and convicted in a court of law, and quite rightly. Right. But, you know, when you say about, is there anything else we can put in place? But there's nothing you can put in place to teach people that it's wrong to abuse young girls, do you young think, do vulnerable you, girls. Do you think it's the uh, duty of the parents to do that, or the schools, or uh, the environment they're in? Well, I take the view, it's like saying, how do you stop a bank robber? Mm. Because everybody knows robbing a bank is wrong, it's wrong, right? So I do not see this as a cultural issue. I do not see it as some kind of uh, problem with the DNA. This is an issue of criminality. Yeah. These young people committed a criminal offence in this country to have, to have uh, a sexual relationship with or with or, uh, with anybody under sixteen is a criminal offence. Now, this was found to be that there was a there was a gang of uh, young men that was uh, organising this, and they were convicted. They were per prosecuted by the police. They were convicted, and they've been jailed. Now. There have been a number of high-profile issues throughout the country. I'm not denying that. But if you look at the overwhelming number of sex offenders, they are 95% of them are white. Now, we don't say that all white people are happen bad. to be pedophiles. Now, we can't say that because that would be wrong. It is because you have some aspects of the right-wing media, like the Daily Mail um, and the Express, that actually say try to put it in a pigeonhole and say this is an the issue for the Pakistanis. It's yeah. not. It's not. The Pakistanis were the ones who actually came over and built this great nation of ours. They worked 16 hours a day in jobs where the indigenous community would not touch. They were brought here to help the economy of this great nation. This nation owes a great gratitude to the people of Pakistan. They have helped to make this nation what it is now. That doesn't mean to say that these eight people, they will never get any sympathy from me. I do feel for their parents. Obviously. Absolutely. But there's no such thing that, because if we were to say, oh, we need a training program, that's to admit as if they don't know what no, they're doing. What I meant to say was that, are you creating any recreation form of, uh, you know, groups or places where they can spend their time? Of course, we have we have fantastic leisure facilities in Rotherham. We have lovely and beautiful parks. We've just spent two and a half million pounds in our Clifton Park in Rotherham. Similarly, you've got fantastic facilities in Sheffield. There's nothing you can actually put in place to say, well, you know, don't do that. Come and play here. People who are going to be involved in criminal activity will always get involved. Let me just share this with you. There are a number.